Hey, 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 sickles, and welcome back to a brand new episode. I am on a roll this week, <coughs> excuse me. Now, when I start talking, you might be wondering, hold on a second, weren't you going to be talking about House of 100 Eyes? You got that right. However, um, there was bits of the film I went blank with, and so I decided to re-watch that this week, and I will be doing that for sure on this podcast. So today we are going to be talking about none other than the most controversial movie, as people say, of all time, Salo or The 120 Days of Sodom. Now this movie was released on the 23rd of November of 1975 in Paris, directed by Pierre Palio Pasolini. If I butchered that, I apologise, but I'm pretty sure that's how he says his name. Now, this movie is Italian, and this movie was based on The 120 Days of Sodom by Marcus de Sade. Is that how you say the name? I'm going to butcher a lot of names in this, so I do apologise. Anyway, uh, now, when we think of Salo... We think of the most brutal, most disturbing, most sadistic and cruel movie ever made. According to a lot of people, of course. Now, I do agree on the above. However, what everyone has to remember is Salo is based on real events that happened in the Republic of Salo in northern Italy where a group of wealthy fascists abduct a large group of young men and women between the ages of 12 to 15. Now, the director, Mr Pasolini, did do 12 movies from the span of 1961 until the last movie in which we are going to be talking about today. We are not going to be talking about any other films that he's done. Uh, we are strictly talking about Salo here. Um... Now, after doing my research on Mr. Pasolini, there has been a number of different occasions in which they were, at the time and to this day, quite questionable, let's be honest. So firstly, um, we have Mr. Pasolini in his 20s during a festival in some place in France, I believe, um, in September of 1949, where Pasolini was masturbating with three youngsters aged 16 and younger. And then when he was questioned a month later about this incident, Pasolini didn't deny it and therefore he was fired from his job at the time. Then in 1963, at 41, Pasolini met 15-year-old Ninito, and that's how he say it, who he later cast in one of his movies. Now, what still is confusing with the death of Pasolini, however, is Pasolini was murdered, possibly assassinated. Later, they thought he had been murdered by an extortionist, but either way, he was murdered on the 2nd of November of 1975 at a beach in Ostonia, and he had been run over several times by his own car. So a 17-year-old, Pino, that's his nickname, was caught driving Pasolini's car and confessed to the murder. On the 7th of May 2005, not that long ago really in the grand scheme of things, Pino retracted his confession claiming he had been threatened of violence to his family. He claimed that three people with a southern accent had committed the murder. Now another story came out that rolls of Salo were stolen and Pasolini was going to meet the thieves to retrieve the stolen rolls. So who knows, right? Like what exactly happened? I did hear another story once where that young um guy, Pino or something, apparently he had come out and said that Pasolini was forcing him to do oral sex or something and he did something in retaliation to that Pino and he therefore murdered Pasolini in defence, like, you know, um, what do you call that? Um, Self-defence. So that was another story I heard. So either way, stories have been flying around, but if you've heard something else and you listen to this podcast, let me know in an in inbox on Instagram or Facebook 
um, what story you know of and I will add it to a future podcast of what other stories there might have been because I find this story very fascinating and I went down a rabbit hole with this and I could continue to go down a rabbit hole. However, I needed to do this podcast so this is as much information as I could get in this space of time. So now moving on to the part of the podcast that you have been waiting for. So Salo, or the 120 Days of Sodom, is based on a group of sadists who gather together kidnapped teenagers from the ages of 12 to 15 at a mansion based in Salo in Italy. Now this mansion is more of a medieval castle high in the mountains and surrounded by forests. So if anybody was to try to escape and say they did get out of the the, this medieval mansion they wouldn't have got very far because there's just forests everywhere around now there is four main men that is involved in this movie now I'm not going to pronounce their proper names because I can't pronounce them and I don't want to butcher them so I'm just going to call them the simplest names what I found and the first one is called the Duke the Duke D. Blangus The Duke de Blangus, that's what I'm going to call him. I do apologise, I can't pronounce it. And he is age 50 and he is an aristocrat. We've got the Bishop, the Duke de Blangus' brother, who is 45. The President, age 60. And the Durset, age 53. And he's a banker. Now their accomplices involve four accomplished prostitutes who are middle aged and eight studs who were solely chosen for the size of their dicks, essentially. Now, there are 16 boys and girls all together, but four of the other girls that are in this group of girls are the daughters of the mentioned men that I mentioned just a second ago. Now, that in itself is pretty revolting, isn't it? Um, But anyway, the whole of France was searched four teenagers and the girls and boys were handed over by their parents. Now these boys and girls come from high social standing so they're all in it together essentially um, which is sad to hear because this is a big topic as well we could talk about in a future podcast of where teenagers get abducted and they get taken to foreign countries and they are used as prostitutes from a very young age and it's illegal and it should never happen and you've got to remember this film is based on true events this is what you've got to keep telling yourself when you're watching this and Salo becomes a whole new movie when you know this and I don't think a lot of people know the true story behind Salo especially those that want to dip their toes into extreme movies or some of those people that just want to buy it for the sake of buying it to say they've watched it so when you know that it's based on true events and this movie is based off of a book that's based on the true events but period Pasolini made it into a film and so it becomes almost surreal to see it on screen in front of your own eyes and that's what I think is kind of traumatizing in a way you know but anyway um, now there was however 264 boys and girls in total that were moved on and not selected and they were moved on to other people to sell is like the boys went to go and be slaves and the girls went on to be prostitutes for this other gang of people and that's as far as i know but anyway um so this movie is split into three segments circle of stories which is what i'm going to call it the circle of shit and the circle of torture now the circle of stories involves the prostitutes mentioned before Uh, reciting stories of their events with clients and they go into detail. During this, one of the main sadists grabs a female teenager and tells her to do what the prostitute had said. Now this goes on for a period of time and the circle of shit commences. (laughs) Now, 
I mentioned, um, well, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this film, we have the leader standing on a balcony explaining to the kidnapped teenagers how long they will be there, what's involved in the whole shebang. And then we'll move on to the, the first segment. So I forgot to mention that, so do, do apologise. So now the circle of shit <laughs> is kind of what you're expecting, maybe not. However, if you've listened to reviews before or heard someone talking about it, you may just know what's to come or what I'm about to talk about. So buckle up. If you have a phobia of shit or if you have a fetish for shit, there's two different extremes here. <laughs> I am not a fan of this. I do not entertain this as a fetish, although some people do. I am not judging you. Um, you do you. So from that, we're going to move on swiftly. So the teenagers all shit into bowls and it is served on a platter and they sit at a co-joining table with the leading sadists and proceed to eat it. Now... <laughs> As much to even, at one point, one of the sadists takes some of the shit on a fork and puts it to a teenager's mouth. And another point is where one of the females is deliberately tripped over by one of the males and he rapes her. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but this movie so far, and this is just the second segment, I'm just going to move on and then I'm just going to say what I have to say. Um... So then we come to the final sequence, the circle of torture. Now this scene has a lot of brutal torture deaths. While one leader sits and watches while laughing and jumping around like a child and another three linking arms and dancing right where these torturous deaths are taking place. So that is your basis of Salo. Now that's not all that happens in this film obviously. There is a lot more that happens that equally that is just equally as bad as what we've just heard so far, what I've just said so far. Now, there is a point in the movie where the teenagers chew on bits of bread and then there is razor blades in them. So this movie won't disturb you because of the blood and gore content, nor any acts of violence we have seen in previous movies. But what does or should disturb you more is the fact it's based off true events that took place during World War Two, as I said. Now, what I would recommend this movie, absolutely 100% I would recommend this movie. It is a cult classic, as we all know, um, and as I'm going to say, and it's a piece of history that should not be forgotten. So this movie has an aura when you watch it. It stands out in if you hear the music, you'll know it's solo. If you see the cover of the actors, see if the, the cover of this teenager and the actors, you will know it's solo. So that in itself speaks volumes. Now, I am proud to own Salo and I have the blue written DVD bundle and I also have the French and Italian versions of it in my collection as well. So Salo is the kind of movie that a lot of people buy and watch it to say they've watched it. Other people are collectors of extreme cinema who has and hasn't watched it. Um, I would say that this movie may cause offence, triggers and a lot of uncomfortable viewing. So be warned, this movie isn't for everyone. So if you're like me and you like watching messed up movies, I highly, highly recommend it. And for collectors as well, I would highly recommend this. It's a staple. Um, now, it has been released since 1975 and it is still being talked about. Now, with that all being said, again, please keep in mind it's based on true events. This movie, when people are talking about it, is not meant to be an uplifting experience of a storytelling review. Because, again, these teenagers were abducted, they were prostituted, they were raped, you know. So, please put that into consideration. These were real teenagers that went through this ordeal. And if they did manage to come out of that alive... God bless them, you know, it's, 
it's a very emotional roller coaster when you're watching this film and I think that is why it has such deep meaning so when you go in and watch this movie and say you don't know it's based on true events you're just going to see Salo as another extreme cinema film that's a staple in people's collection but when you know the true backstory it turns into a completely different film and you view these sadists in a completely different light and you sort of feel for the characters you know you feel how upset they are you know and the acting in this film is spectacular I don't think anybody else could pull off recreating this film and I don't think any director could pull off making this film the way Mr Pasolini did so again it is a once in a lifetime gem of a movie but for good and bad reasons and yeah so that is my talk on Salo I hope you enjoyed it please don't forget to tag me on social media if you have this movie in your collection I would love to see your movie collections and I would love to see that you have Salo in your collection and please 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 send me a message on what your thoughts are about Salo because I do want to get a lot of people's perspectives. And again, like I said, I am going to go back in a rabbit hole with researching about this director. Because I seriously think there is a lot more to Pasolini than what meets the eye and what's out there. So I will do my research. But if you know something I don't know that you think would have been worthy of mentioning in this podcast this episode please let me know I would gladly appreciate that now tomorrow's movie will be let me get my list up here so I am going to be talking about irreversible I'm going to talk about irreversible tomorrow uh, but if not tomorrow I will definitely do it the next day. I have a lot going on behind the scenes and I am in a different mindset to what I was a couple of months back. There was a reason the podcast went to a standstill. Um, if you want to know about that, I will share it. I am done with caring what people think and I'm just going to speak the truth and why I removed myself from the Unearth Films group uh, due to a couple of members that caused a bit of chaos and caused me a lot of grief and I walked out from it. And if you want to know more about that, I will openly talk about it. I have the screenshots still to this day. So if people would like proof of what I'm saying, I will supply them on my social media. And I might do a blog post on this to start off my blogging. Why not? Uh, but that's only if people want to hear why I've been away as long as I have. And I've come back with a vengeance. So without further ado, I am going to let you go now. And I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Give it a like, give it a share, give it a comment, share it to everyone that you know. If you want to be featured on this podcast, please send me a message or email me at centurystowers at gmail.com. If that is incorrect, I will tell you in the next podcast. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's centurystowers at gmail.com. Yes, it is. I know it is. Um, so yeah, so good night, God bless, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. Because this podcast is around the world now, which is crazy. So yeah, so thanks to you again. Uh, like I said before, this podcast wouldn't be possible without you. So yeah, I'm going to go now, have a fresh cup of coffee and a little snack. And I will catch you on the next one with Irreversible. Bye.